evening. Hello. Um, I had an idea last night and I just jumped on it this morning and I think it's going to work and I wanted to share it with you because I don't know if there's anyone else in the world like me who has a love of old machines and treadle machines seem to gravitate towards me. But first of all, there's only so many places in your house where you can stash treadle cabinets because they're large. And also sometimes you end up with a machine that is an odd size base that will not fit in a standard, like a Singer cabinet. Um, that's the most common here, is Singer cabinets. But like this is a, a Goodrich B. I have a new home, I have a white, I have a free, I have all kinds, and they're all slightly different size bases. The pin configuration is slightly different so they won't fit, but I want to use them. So I came up with a plan and I think it's gonna work, so I wanna share it with you. So um, the first thing though is the machine that you're going to be using needs to be in some kind of a base and um, I've just made simple boxes for mine and so the wheel here the part of the wheel that the belt is going to go over needs to be outside of the box that's the that's the first thing okay so let me put her away for a moment and show you what I'm going to do to the table Okay, so first of all, this is a Singer cabinet, and it is a very worn, very well-used Singer cabinet. It's very utilitarian. Um, I would suggest if you're going to do this, you do this with one that is not the family heirloom at this point, okay? So you can see I've got wood putty, I've got scratches, I've got all kinds of stuff, but it's going to work for what I need. What I'm going to do is a lot of times they'll have this piece over here, it's metal, it's on a spring, and the belt comes in and out of these two holes. In my opinion, you can either keep that in there or you can take it out and the belt will be free, but you need to have this area open, okay? Then I'm gonna need a very thin base to put over this hole. So a piece of metal would work good. Now, if I used Reserve Champion Breeding U sign, it's very sturdy. And my daughter said, that's fine, I can use her signs. She doesn't mind, she's not using them. Um, but it's a little bit long. So if I use this sign, I'm not gonna be able to close the lid because I have it open. It's on hinges over here, okay? And at this point, I wanna be able to close my lid if I'm not using it. So I also have a little novelty sign and it's a lighter metal, but I still think it's gonna work. So, you know, I can just put that there and I think that that's going to be just fine. You can paint, if you have a, a sign that you don't really, you know, want in your sewing room, you can paint it, you know. If anything, I've proven that you can use Rust-Oleum paint and paint over stuff. But this is going to work for me because at this point, I'll move my thread tree here, I can still close my lid on top of it, okay? Now, at some point, I'll probably come back, and I like the novelty sign because they have little holes in the corner. So once I paint it, um, I'll probably get some little um, screws or tiny nails or something and permanently attach it. We're not gonna worry about that today. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is, if you're gonna use your table for several different machines, what you're going to want to do is figure out, in general, you know, the one that's tallest and the one that's shortest because the wheel placement on machines are all different. Some are higher, some are shorter, some have taller boxes, some have shorter boxes, you know. So my Goodrich B is about as tall as I think any of them are, and so that's why I got her out here. So let me go get her and set her on here. Okay, so Rose is a tall girl with a tall wheel, all right? Let me tighten up my camera here. But what I need to do is figure out a belt that's going to work for her and other machines. Now the standard belt for treadle machines is leather, you know, which works fine. 
if you have just one machine and you don't need it to to give at all because it's not going to you know and it has the little um, metal staple kind of closure that you can use on it what I have decided to use are these clear polyurethane roller belts and I actually have two of them here together that I glued together and I'll show you how I do that um, I have bought this one I believe I think I might have gotten it off of eBay but that's the little label um, it's just a roller belt clear and I believe it's a 3 16 inch width okay look for the width but they're very very strong and they have some give to them which is important for me now this one came in I think I think it was a six foot length which is slightly small it's like that much too small so I have two of them that I can put together um, you know you might be able to get a whole wheel of this stuff which would also I'm assuming that that would work well for a sewing machine also I don't see why not anyhow I digress what I need to do because I'm keeping this part over here that has the two holes I need to create my loop of this stuff while I'm standing over here by the machine okay so let me go ahead and feed it through around the wheel and have the two ends coming up on either side of my machine okay so just ignore all my junk down there um, but what I have is this poly belt fed through the wheel as it should be so that you know if I tug it the wheels going to turn down there and up above let me move the camera up now here okay so up above here I can see where those two ends should meet now understanding that this is probably the tallest machine I'm going to be using I'm actually going to give her a little bit of a stretch because I want to be able to use this machine with a shorter um, use this belt with a shorter machine also at this point so I'm actually going to cut it about an inch shorter than what I've got here and this is very strong I think that's going to be fine if you're only going to be using it with one machine and that's going to be your baby and you're never switching it out or if you do you know you can always add um, I would just make your belt you know holding it nice but not super tight um, and just wherever those two ends meet cut it there okay so I'm going to cut mine slightly slightly shorter and I'll be right back to show you see this little nub right here that's where I already uh, welded the two together and so this little bit of a few inches is the only part that I'm adding on so I do have a lot extra of this you know if you can get a piece seven feet instead of six feet I think you would be in business all righty so I'm just going to cut this right here okay and move my extra piece aside for a bit and down below I'm going to unhook it from the big wheel below so I have more slack to play with before I show you how I'm going to weld it together I have used these type of staples on my poly wire before and it worked but it's it's not the best in my opinion because it makes a little chunky noise as it comes through and I just don't like the metal with other you know so that does work but I would suggest if you are going to use a metal staple that you heat it up like red hot and hold it with pliers not your fingers when you put it through and it'll just burn a hole through the belt as you use it what I'm going to do is I saw this on YouTube so you know it's true um, I have a little vise that I just moved over here if you don't have a vise something that'll hold something securely and I've got a butter knife that I don't particularly care about discoloring and I've got a torch so let me get all of that together and position myself here again ignore my box of things I have moved my highly flammable interfacing stack away so I think we'll be fine I've got my two ends that need to be joined together here 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is take my handy dandy torch. I've got my butter knife here in my vise holding it together. Heat it up until it is red hot. Okay, you see that tip glowing? That is good. So I turned off my vise. I'm going to get either side of it. Touch my belt. It's smoking and melting and then I bring them together and I'm going to use my desk here as a brace so I can continue to hold them so that they're going to be matched up. Because uh, if you just try to hold them up in the air, they will get misaligned easily. Trust me, I know from experience. And I need to hold them here for about a minute or so until the weld is cool. So I'm just going to let the camera run and edit out the extra time in a moment. Okay, so it's welded together at this point and I can tug it really hard and it's not going to budge. So there's going to be a little lip here and I'm just going to try to take it off with a blade. Um, I also think that sanding it with a Dremel would work. I'm trying not to cut myself as I go. But just walk, working myself around here and trimming. I think I need a, a sharper blade. But you get the idea. So give me a minute to go ahead and get this, uh, the main part of this lip trimmed off. Okay, so I've got most of the lump off. I don't want to cut too close into that weld, but I got enough that I think it'll go through my um, belt groove pretty easily. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get it set up here onto my machine. Okay, so I just put some cotton under here and I'm going to get started. I have actually not sewn with her on a treadle. I've just hand turned her wheel after I fixed her up. So this is going to be exciting. Oh my gosh, look at that. And as far as the bobbin winder, this bobbin winder, it's on a pivot. So when I want to wind the bobbin, I should be able to move it over here, put my belt in. Now you can see the belt is kind of going over the box. Uh, if I had a way to scoot that over some, I would, but let's just see if it'll work on here. If, let me take off the clutch, move this over. And yeah, I think it's going to work enough. It's not perfect because it is rubbing against the box. If I was going to use this all the time, I'd probably cut a little groove in my box here so the belt could move over freely. But I think you can see it is turning the little cog here. So all is well. So then when I don't want to wind the bobbin, I can pop it back. But yeah, I might make a little mark with a pencil of where I need to just drill out a little groove right here for that belt to go. But let me put the clutch back in here. And yeah, she is sewing. And so I'm just so excited because this is a way that I can use all of my treadle machines, even if I don't have a cabinet that is specifically for them. And um, by doing it this way with the little plate, if I ever want to, you know, turn this back into a singer only cabinet, all I have to do is remove my metal plate and possibly change the size on my belt. So that's it. And I think you can see I was able to sew with my treadle, which does not fit in the cabinet, but I can use my cabinet. And I'm really happy about that because um, that's going to open up the door for so many other options. So. I hope you got something out of this. I'm going to go ahead and paint my piece of metal and permanently attach it with some pretty little brass screws or something to this cabinet. And again, don't use the family heirloom. Use a, you know, very hardworking cabinet that does not have extreme sentimental value to someone in your life. Just saying that up front. But I think it's going to work great. So thanks for watching. See you later. Bye bye.